Hello everyone and welcome to one of the uh, most famous games that I still haven't shown on the channel. It is the Petrov Immortal and uh, uh, played play by Alexander Petrov himself, even though you know him uh, uh, by uh, sort of inventing the Petrov defense uh, to uh, counter White's uh, pawn to e4 uh, and the knight to f3. Uh, this game does not feature the Petrov defense. This game actually uh, features the Joko Piano. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, a little bit we we weird in that way that he would create the Petrov but not, uh, you know, play it. Uh, but uh, again, we don't know much about his opponent in this game, Alexander Hoffman. Uh, other than uh, he has three games in the da database, all three against Alexander Petrov here. Uh, one uh, with uh, the white pieces and two with the black pieces. Uh, and uh, he lost all three of them. Uh, but the game is quite spectacular, features a very nice king hunt. Uh, you guys will enjoy it if you still haven't seen it. I mean, there are many mortal games, especially, uh, you know, ones uh, from the olden days. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, you guys will really love this one. And this was played in 1844 in Warsaw. And uh, yeah, for those of you who, who watched my Paul Morphy saga, uh, this was uh, even before that. So uh, here Morphy was around seven years old. It will still be some three, four years before we enjoy those first games against uh, his father, uh, Michael Alon uh, Alonzo Michael Morphy, uh, that, uh, you know, already you could see that Morphy could really wield uh, them pieces. Uh, but yeah, this was even before that. Uh, so this is uh, sort of the, 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 the brilliancy before Paul Morphy. So let's check it out. Uh, Hoff Alexander Hoffman with the white pieces opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e5, knight to f3, and now not the Petrov defense by Mr. Petrov himself, but knight to c6. We have bishop to c4, bishop to c5, and now uh, I, I think this is very un uncharacteristic for that era that uh, the Evans Gambit was not played. I mean, uh, I almost don't believe that this game is real. As I mean, if this is the position and the year is 1844, you play pawn to b4 here. But okay, pawn to c5, obviously, Mr. Hoffman, a great position positionalist. Uh, knight to f6, uh, uh, going for uh, continuing the main line of the Joko Piano, d4, e captures on d4, and now pawn to e5. And okay, uh, this is uh, a very well known stuff, and nowadays d5 is pretty much an automatic. You play this against a, a four year old, a five year old, a six year old, a 80 year old, 100 year old person. Uh, everyone plays d5 here. That goes without saying because that's what the books, uh, of course, uh, thought us. Uh, but here we have knight to e4. And uh, the game already becomes very interesting. We have bishop to d5. And now knight captures on f2. And okay, now with uh, the existence of chess engines, it's easy to say, oh, this is just not good. This is minus 1.2. Uh, for uh, for uh, you know white or black, but in those days um, you know you you simply didn't know such things. King captures on f2, and d captures on c3, opening up a discovery from the bishop here. And uh, you could go to f1, you could go to, uh, uh, to to e1, you could go to e2, or you could go to g3. Now uh, interestingly, even uh, before engines got really, really strong, uh, people thought that uh, just moving the king, for example, to e2 was much, much safer than bringing the king over to g3. Uh, but nowadays, we know that's not the case. And in this game, uh, Hoffman actually went for king to g3, the strongest reply. Uh, so, okay, c captures on b2, uh, Petrov grabs the pawn here, attacks the bishop and rook, or forks them, and bishop captures on b2. And now, uh, there are a couple of moves you could consider here, like you could go castles, uh, but still, it's nothing spectacular. Like queen c2 goes after the bishop and prepares some uh, nasty stuff here, but just bishop to e7 gains control over g5, and it's, uh, it's a very nice position. White will always be uh, better. Uh, whether white can win this, that remains to be seen. But here, uh, knight to e7 was played by Mr. Alexander Petrov, and now the game uh, becomes uh, very interesting. Now again, queen to c2, definitely a move. You go after the, the bishop here, and for example, if d6, defending the bishop, uh, you can play bishop to e4. Sort of preventing black from castling as uh, captures on, on h7 would happen, but it's very, very hard to continue. You could go knight to g6, uh, but then white might uh, yeah, consider striking uh, with h4, h5, or even just go rook to d1, prevent captures on e5, and white will uh, always be much, much better. On the other hand, you could go for the immediate bishop captures on f7, but that's not that great. Here, king captures on f7, and now after knight to g5, you can just move the king back, and there's no good follow-up. For example, rook to f1, uh, 
uh, trying to trap the queen runs into d5. You just free up the queen. And if knight f7, queen to d7. And if knight captures an h8, knight to f5 with check. And now you have problems. For example, king to f3, knight to e3, and the black will just be up too much material. Uh, so after this knight to e7 move, there are uh, some options uh, and also the, the best one uh, is pawn to h3. If you play pawn to h3 here, you free up the h2 square for your king. Now white really doesn't have all that much to worry about. And black could consider some like c6 or knight captures on d5. Or you even castle king side and then go for some uh, queen to c2 again, attacking the bishop, bishop to v6 and rook to d1. Uh, very, very strong play uh, for white. However, here, Alexander Hoffman went for knight to g5. He wanted to, he wanted to be trickier than Alexander Petrov. Uh, and uh, th now the problem is, what do you play here? Well, there are a couple of good options here. You could go, well, one thing you don't want to play is castle, just to get that out of the way, because then there's queen d3, threatening checkmate. And if you try knight g6, then there's h4 with the threat of just um, uh, removing the knight. And okay, uh, defending the knight, you don't want to allow queen captures on g5. But after d6, knight to d2, for example, there's c6 attacking the bishop. And now there's this nasty bishop captures on f7 check. And all the tactics simply work in white's favor here. Let's say rook captures on f7, knight captures. And now you can't even capture back. Because if you capture back, then comes knight to e4. And again, no good move here. For example, bishop to e6, you will play pawn to h5. And after knight captures on e5, just bishop captures on e5, and you trade everything off. Queen captures, rook captures, and knight captures on c5. At the end of the line, white is just up a full rook. So uh, that's uh, one, one thing that could happen after knight to g5, but that's not a very good thing. So the way you play this is by playing knight captures on d5. The move that Alexander played here, Alexander Petrov played here, or you go, I'm just going to show you a fine line uh, because this game is full of fine line. I mean, okay, this game is uh, strictly possible because uh, of a move in the opening that no one will play today. But, uh, you know, these are the, basically the beginnings of chess and someone had to play these moves in order for us to avoid them in the future. Uh, you could go knight to f5 with check. Uh, this is also very nice and now after king to f4 defending the knight and also attacking the knight uh, you do have castles here and now you give up the knight and now after d6 check king to f4 d captures on e5 bishop captures on e5 you have this uh the position is uh, okay for black un uh, for white unless black plays bishop to e3 check and now you just fall apart king captures queen captures on g5 with check Bishop to f4, you have rook to e8 with check, king to f3, queen to g4 with check, now wins you the bishop, king f2, queen captures on f4, and after bishop to f3, queen to e3 with check, will force the king to f1, and now, okay, you do have the uh, extra piece, but uh, the rook on h1 will never see the light of day, and black is winning this um, uh, by force. So that's... Uh, some of the possibilities. But after knight to g5, uh, Alexander Petrov played knight captures on d5, and this is where the uh, fun part really begins. Now comes knight captures on f7. The sole reason why the knight came to f7 in the first place, uh, asking the, the black king to capture the knight. And of course, if you capture the, the uh, knight here, then comes queen captures on d5 with check. Okay, the king has to move. You will take on c5. You will take uh, all of the pieces and it's going to be some sort of a draw. Queen to g5 checking to f2, rook to f8 checking to g1. Uh, but all in all, not, not more than a draw. However, after knight captures on f7, uh, here comes the, the real move and why this is considered to be Alexander Petrov's immortal game. Uh, he just castled here and he sacrificed the queen on d8. And it looks a bit weird. I mean, you really don't have all that much here. You have the, the knight and bishop in front of that king, maybe the rook, and also perhaps the bishop somehow comes into the game. So what did, uh, what did he see here? Well, let's see. Knight captures on d8. Uh, and uh, although this is not the best move, all of the other moves lose uh, the game for white as well, feel free to pause the video and try to find the, the cleanest way for black to win the game, and also the only way for black to win the game. It's actually a, for a forced uh, checkmate in 12, so uh, have at it. While I, while I give you a couple of seconds, finish Alexander Petrov's immortal game. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting this brilliant mate in 12. Maybe it's in 13, but I don't know, I somehow remember it's in 12. Uh, 
No, it's actually in 13. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, the move is bishop to f2 with check. It's the only move that you can start with check, and I know it's not the fanciest of solutions you know it starts with check but still you have to play uh play it correctly and now uh you can't go to g4 if you go to g4 then just rook to f4 with check and after g uh, king g5 h6 check and after king to g6 knight e7 check and after king to h5 rook to h4 will be checkmate the bishop defends it and of course the knight prevents the king from coming to g6 so uh what's the other option well after bishop to f2 check there's king to h3 but now you are under the mask of the bishop pawn to d6 with check uh, and okay you can't block because uh, uh you also you could consider knight to f4 with check but then you allow the king up the board by playing d6 check what you're actually doing is taking away the g4 square from the black king and now for example if you block with the pawn knight to f4 is checkmate uh, it doesn't even matter if you try to give up the queen a black will not take the queen uh, uh, alexander Petr will just uh, again play knight to f4 checkmate there's no square for the uh, for the white king so really uh, a magnificent position so after d6 with check e6 was played make some use of that knight that captured the queen and that um, alexander Petlo petrov so uh, uh you know uh, it refuses to to take back uh knight to f4 with check uh king to g4 is the only move so okay we're gonna play that and now knight captures an e6 and what do you play here uh, let's say you play queen d5 you prevent the knight from moving doesn't matter rook to f4 checking h5 and the rook to h4 is checkmate again uh king, a king cannot come to g6 and all of the other squares are taken so after knight captures an e6 knight captures an e6 was played and now bishop captures an e6 again comes with check king to g5 and now how do you finish that white king rook to f5 with check we have king to g4 only move and now comes the the grand finale pawn to h5 with check uh king to h3 and now rook to f3 a beautiful discovery a, a, a double check checkmate if you will uh and it was of course in this position that alexander hoffman uh sort of uh, agreed that he was bested in the in the in the best possible way and this is uh alexander petrov's immortal game so uh yeah maybe from a from a theoretical standpoint uh, th this game doesn't really have that much value like i said after this um uh, pawn to pawn to e5 move d5 would have been an automatic nowadays and i'm sure you guys have played this many of times with white and you're always like oh yeah i'm gonna play a great game and then black just plays d5 and you have nothing because you really don't that's the that's the objective evaluation of the position but here uh knight d4 was played and then the fun starts so you know if you play this someone plays knight e4 against you uh yeah know what you can and can't do uh now uh, you know uh for for maybe a three minute blitz game or a bullet game black can still play this and you might even lose this as white but objectively it's not um not that spectacular uh, but yeah, this is uh, Petrov's uh, Petrov's Immortal game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and that uh, you will suggest many more great games. Someone suggested this game in the previous video that I've made, and uh, as I still haven't shown the Petrov's Immortal, here it is. But yeah, yeah, I, you know, if someone asks you today or tomorrow when you will be enjoying your time with your friends at the bar or the library, uh, yes, Petrov's Immortal game was not uh, played uh, in the Petrov. So yeah, what are you gonna do? Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank John Anderson, Luke Donato, uh, John Tardif, BulletChestThriller.com, and Alexander Aldridge uh, for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. Really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And hope you guys were wearing a hoodie for this one as well, as it's always nice to honor Mr. Hoodie Guy. See you soon.